Amen. So happy new year. Keep your place there in Proverbs chapter 23. We're going to be in Proverbs chapter 23 um, a few times, many times this morning and also um, this evening. Um, Proverbs 23 has just got a lot of really good um, advice and a lot of good uh, biblical um, you know, direction for our lives, especially when it comes to things, you know, we're looking at for the new year, typical um, things people would call New Year's resolutions. Um, a lot of those things are in um, Proverbs chapter 23. But of course, um, it's New Year's Day, so it's the first year of 2023, and, and everybody, hopefully, you know, you've made some New Year's resolutions. Maybe you didn't. <laughs> maybe, maybe I can inspire you to make some New Year's resolutions. Um, today, I'm a little bit late. Um, in um, 2023, as we're, we're here already, um, you know, I actually forgot that it was uh, 2023. I went to get coffee this morning, and, and I had my, my, uh, my debit card was 1222 expired, and I went to give the lady my debit, it was, you know, it was declined, and I was like, why is it declined? And I look and hear it with my card was expired. So look, it's here. Uh, 2023 is here. I don't know where 2022 um, went. That was a quick one. Um, I don't know if it was quick for you, but it was really fast for me. All right. Um, but New Year's resolutions. So everybody makes New Year's resolutions. Now here's the pitiful thing about New Year's resolutions. It's hard to get an actual statistics on, on this, but most people abandoned their New Year's resolution by January 31st, all right? So, so by, you know, they basically make it a month and then they abandoned their um, New Year's resolution. Before I even get into the sermon this morning, let me just say that's good news for the Bible reading resolution because if you don't abandon the Bible reading um, resolution until January 31st, you'll read the whole New Testament in January, okay? So definitely make that resolution to read um, the Bible and do the nine chapters a day challenge. But this morning I want to talk about something very specific. And it's funny because in churches like ours and uh, churches, you know, like-minded churches like ours, you know, one of the things that we claim is that, you know, we don't leave things unsaid. Like we just come out and we preach what the Bible says no matter what, no matter if it offends you or, or whatever. Um, and it's funny because as, as I was studying this topic for this morning's sermon, I kind of feel like this is something that, you know, I should probably preach more because it's in the Bible quite a bit. It relates to a lot of different things in the lives of Christians and the lives of a lot of people. And it's actually a huge problem in our society today, what I'm going to talk about this morning. Of course, you know, on, on the topic of New Year's resolutions and goals, um, what I want to talk about is something related to your actual health this morning, all right? 50%, um, 50 of New Year's resolutions in the United States are related to how people eat and how people want to become more healthy. 50%. So if you talk to somebody who has a New Year's resolution, their number one, 50% um, of people, their number one resolution is going to be something to do with, with eating, losing weight, something along those lines, just basically getting more healthy. All right, so you say, well, does the Bible care about what you look like? No, we're not talking about what you look like. We're not even really talking about, you know, body types or anything like that. But what the Bible talks about quite a bit is this sin. It is a sin, and it's called gluttony, the sin of gluttony. I want to show you this morning how serious gluttony is and how it's actually attached to a lot of other sins in the Bible. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Keep your place in Proverbs 23, because that's kind of our main chapter we're going to keep coming back to um, in Proverbs 23. But of course, pastors, you know, I think, you know, and look, I can relate to this myself. They don't really want it. This isn't something they want to preach about because, you know, if a lot of people are suffering from the problem, then it's not something that they're just like, you know, want to just get up and offend all their people. But look, you know what kind of church you're in. So here we go. All right. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And look at verse number 16. Gluttony is what we're talking about um, this morning. But really, gluttony is not just a single thing. It is related to so many other things in your life. And that's really the main point I want to get across to you this morning. It's not just one simple problem. Okay, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. The Bible says, Know ye not that you are, ye are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. So our bodies, 
are the temple of God. Now turn to Proverbs chapter 25. So we are not to just abuse our body. We are not to just, you know, do things to our body that just harm ourselves. This was a big thing um, with the, the vaccine. This was a big Christian argument, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, is that, hey, that my body is a temple of God. I shouldn't put something um, that is sinful, that's against my conscience, into my body. Look at Proverbs chapter 25 and verse number 16. The Bible says here, talking about what we eat, it says, Hast thou found honey? Eat so much as is sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Here we're talking about something that is a major problem in our society today, in America especially, is this idea of sweet things or just sugar. Okay, it's talking about, you know, don't eat so much sugar you get sick or, you know, damage yourself. Now go back to Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs chapter 23 uses the word gluttony um, several times. And the first thing I want to point out is that gluttony, while it is, I'm going to show you how it's attached to many other sins in uh, people's lives in the Bible, there is one main sin that gluttony is many times paired with directly in the Bible. And I'm going to explain to you why that is. Look at Proverbs chapter 23. Look down at verse number 21. First of all, the definition of gluttony. I mean, just the definition is going to explain much of this to you. But the definition of gluttony, you mean, what does it even mean? You know, what does it say? What does it mean if someone is a glutton? You say, oh, that, that person's a glutton. It means that they, have an, they overindulge in food and drink. That's what the dictionary would say about, and I got problems with the dictionary because like apparently at playing Scrabble last night, like every word is in the dictionary, but that's a whole nother story in itself, okay? Brother Jeff's putting down these words. I'm like, that is not a word. I'm like every word is in the dictionary. Acronyms are in the dictionary. Does that even make sense? I'm sorry. Okay, the, the overindulgence of food and drink, that's the definition of gluttony, all right? Now look at Proverbs 23 and verse number 21. Proverbs 23, in verse number 21. I'm going to explain to you why that these two things are attached. For the drunkard and the glutton. So you see that being a drunk or a drunkard or someone who overindulges in alcoholic beverages is tied with the glutton several times in the Bible. It says what? It says, shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. So you say, why? Now look at, go back to verse uh, number 20 of that same chapter, just one verse back, it says, be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. Again, tying those two things together, wine bibbers meaning people that are drunks, people that are just sitting there and just guzzling wine and alcoholic beverages. And then it ties them, it says, they're also going to be riotous eaters of flesh, meaning these are people that just like are just overindulging in actual food itself. So you say, why? Does the Bible tie drunkenness with gluttony? And the reason is, first of all, drunkenness can be even considered a subset of gluttony from the very definition, first of all. Just, you know, this overindulgence of food and drink. Okay, and obviously, you know, overindulging in alcoholic beverages is going to have much more serious consequences than overindulging in, like, milk or grape juice or whatever. Okay, but the point is, and the Bible talks about that as kind of a whole separate thing, drunkenness and all the horrible things that are going to happen to you in your life if you are a drunk. But the point is, many of the consequences of overindulging in food and what we eat and also overindulging in alcohol and alcoholic beverages are the same. The consequences are the same. Now look, these health consequences of gluttony are a serious problem in our country, especially today. I would say that in the United States, we probably have the most serious problem with gluttony. And look, it's, it, alcohol is just a subset of that. You know, you see people that, I mean, what do you know, what do you notice about people that just constantly are just constant, you know, consumers of, of beer and alcoholic beverages? I mean, are these the people that are in the best shape that you've ever seen? No, many of them are just, they're overweight, they have these big, you know, the, the, this is where you get the men that have the big bellies in front of them, like they're carrying a baby, you know, all this, and, you know, it just, it ruins, it ruins your body in the same way as gluttony will ruin your body and ruin your health. Let me give you some stats. 
this morning. Let me give you some stats. These stats, by the way, I look at these stats like once a year, and they just keep getting worse. <laughs> they just keep getting worse and worse and worse. The obesity prevalence in the United States is, meaning how many people are obese, okay, is 42%. 42% of people in the United States are obese. I mean, that's crazy. That's, you know, that's, that's a high number. That's almost half of the people in the United States are considered obese. Now, I brought this up before, but this keeps getting more and more, uh, you know, higher and higher and higher as well. Diabetes is a huge problem in the United States. And diabetes is this overindulgence. Look, and if you've ever eaten food from other places in the world or even gone to other places in the world and eaten food, it is America that uses so much sugar in everything. It is, that's an American thing. Many people that I've known that were from foreign nations, they couldn't even eat the type of food that Americans ate because they're like, oh, there's too much sugar in that. They just couldn't handle it. But that's why you see in the United States that they say 11% of people are currently diabetic in the United States. And then 30, what is the number? It's 30... 38% of the adult population in the United States is pre-diabetic. So meaning, what does that mean? That means they have elevated levels of insulin, and of course insulin is what your body creates to take care of sugar, and these people that are pre-diabetic are typically gonna be diabetic within 10 years. That's what they say. So you look at these numbers, it's like 40% of the United States is either currently diabetic or is going to be diabetic, All right? And look, sugar is the issue here. Now this affects your all kinds of things. It's just like alcohol, it, it can affect your lifespan, it affects your overall health. But the point is, this is why gluttony is tied with alcohol um, in, and being a drunkard in the Bible, because being a drunkard is actually a subset of being a glutton. Just this inability or inability or you know, just you don't want to control what you are consuming. All right, and then alcohol, of course, gives you a no, whole other set of problems, like you're going to lose all your friends, you're going to, you know, get violently assaulted, you know, all these things are going to happen um, to you, all right, with alcohol. But look, there's, other than being a drunk, there is many other sins that are tied with gluttony. Let me just go through a few with you. Turn to Genesis chapter 3. You say, okay, you know, gluttony, maybe I should start eating healthy, but look, I'm going to give you some examples this morning on how serious this is. You say, okay, you know, I, I, I struggle with food in my life, but that's just one thing. No, it's not just one thing because it is going to lead to other bad things, and I'll explain why. Look at Genesis chapter 3. The first, here's another sin that is tied with gluttony in the Bible, and this sin is serious. It is, it's the sin of rebellion. The Bible ties the sin of rebellion with the sin of gluttony. You're like, wow, that's serious. Look, the Bible says that rebellion, this is what Samuel said to Saul. He said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Now, okay, gluttony didn't seem so bad, but rebellion's bad. Rebellion's bad. Look at Genesis chapter 3 and verse number 6. What did Satan use to tempt Eve? You know what he used? Food. <laughs> and of course, we know that you know, that he was causing her to doubt God's word. We know that she was, you know, wondering about what this, you know, knowledge would give her. But look at what the Bible says in verse number six. It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. Look, the food looked good. The apple looked good. And then, of course, and a tree desired to make one wise. So, yeah, there was the wisdom part of it that she was curious about. But it also says that it was that the food looked good. This wasn't some disgusting plate of something she didn't want to eat. It was, it was good-looking food. Interest, it's interesting that Satan used food to cause man to fall. I mean, that's just something that's interesting to notice. But turn to Deuteronomy chapter 21. You say, Pastor, that's reaching. Turn to Deuteronomy chapter 21. Deuteronomy chapter 21, and look at verse number 20. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse number 20, talking about how gluttony is tied with rebellion. Gluttony is clearly tied with rebellion in the Bible. From the fall of man, or from the fall of Eve to Adam, look at verse number 18 of Deuteronomy chapter 21. It says, if a man have a stubborn and what? And rebellious son. 
So here a man has this son, has this child, and we're, I believe we're talking about a, you know, an older child at this point, you know, late teens into 20s or whatever, a man of a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have ch chastened him will not hearken unto them. It's like they're disciplining him how they should. They're doing what they're supposed to do. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. And they shall say to the elders of the city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious. But look at what other problems he has here. It says, he will not obey our voice. Look at this. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Here we see the glutton and the drunkard together again, and it goes along with this son being rebellious and stubborn. And then, I mean, all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. Now, I bet this didn't have to happen too many times. Because, you know, people realize, like, yeah, I shouldn't be a stubborn and rebellious son. So we see that gluttony is tied with drunkenness many times throughout the Bible, but it's also tied with the sin of rebellion. You say, well, that, that sounds pretty serious. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'll give you another sin that gluttony is tied to. You say, well, this isn't a big deal. You know, this isn't a big deal to be gluttonous. I'll just exercise more. I'll get to that in a few minutes. But look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here's another sin that gluttony is also tied to. Look, I'm not saying that every person that's a glutton is going to have this sin too. But what I'm saying is, is that there is a definite pattern in the Bible about somebody that struggles with gluttony and a connection with drunkenness. I'm not saying every person that is gluttonous is a drunk. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that there is a definite pattern here, and I'm going to give you the answer to this pattern at the end of the sermon. But let's just notice these things in the Bible. When you study gluttony and you study this, you're just going to come across these patterns that it's always tied to these other sins as well. And I'm going to explain to you why. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse number 7. Here's another sin that the Bible ties gluttony to. Idolatry. You're like, oh man, that sounds bad. Idolatry, meaning literally worshiping other gods, literally putting something before the Lord in your life. Look at verse number seven. It says, neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither, here's another one, fornication. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty Thousand. Turn to Numbers chapter 25, and I'll show you the story that this is referencing. So the Bible here is saying that these people, they, just, they were just eating, and they were just drinking. Again, what do we see there? We see gluttony and drunkenness. You know, we can assume drunkenness um, from that passage. But we see that these people, they were, they were idolaters as well. And then they were committing fornication. This is the story of the children of Israel when they went into Moab and they committed whoredoms with the nation of Moab. And God judged them for us. This is the story of Balaam, how he tricked them into going and, and mixing with the, the Moabites and they ended up committing fornication with the Moabite women. And God judged them. Look at verse number 25. This is what it's talking about. In verse number, uh, sorry, sorry, Numbers chapter 25, in verse number 9, the Bible says, and those, so God sent a plague upon the nation of Israel. And it says, and those that died in the plague were 20 and 4,000. So God, these, they went into the Moabites and they were committing fornication, but they were also just riotously eating and drinking. And, and they were also worshiping their idols. They committed idolatry. All these sins were lumped together. Now, we just looked at a, a Bible um, documentary last night um, for our New Year's Eve party. And this is one of those things, by the way, I'll just, uh, just a side note, that people will say, oh, the Bible has contradictions in it. You'll say, in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, it said 23,000. And in, for, in Numbers chapter 25, it says 24,000. There's a mistake in the Bible. Every single mistake that people bring up in the Bible is just, they're just not understanding what's actually happening. What does it say in 1 Corinthians chapter 10? It says, and fell in one day, three and 20,000, meaning in one day, God killed 23,000 of them, and in the entire plague, 24,000 died. 
So it just means that they didn't all die in one day. This is actually a proof of how honest and how detailed the King James translators were to the original text is what this actually is. Because they didn't say, oh, uh, it says 23,000 in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 in the Texas Receptus. We better just change that to 24,000 so everybody um, doesn't you know, point out. No, it, there's no contradiction because it said 23,000 fell in one day. And in Numbers chapter 25, it says 24,000 were killed in general. Now, if it would say the other way around, 23,000 you know, were killed in the plague. And then it said 24,000 were killed in one day. Yeah, we might have a problem there. But that's not what the Bible says. So the King James translators, it shows you how honest and how detailed they stuck to the original words that God had in the Bible. All right? So look, there is no contradiction. All right? So but just all that to say this. Gluttony, again, tied with all these other serious sins. Look, it is a serious sin by itself. But you can see how these other serious sins also come along with it. So you say, what's the big deal? Everybody's a glutton in the United States. But yeah, but it's a serious sin, first of all. And second of all, all these other serious sins many times come along with it. All right? Here's another one. Go back to Proverbs chapter 23. You've got to keep your place there because that's kind of our main reference text. Go back to Proverbs chapter 23. Actually, um, just look at the, uh, your bulletin. It's the verse of the week. Proverbs chapter 23. So we see that the Bible clearly relates gluttony to drunkenness. We see it relates it to rebellion, that God like, literally equates rebellion with witchcraft. Okay? It talks about you know, gluttony being tied to idolatry, gluttony being tied to fornication. You're just like, what in the world? Look at this one. Verse number 21 says, The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. We'll talk about that tonight. But look at this. And drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. You know what the Bible's saying here? Is that gluttony is going to make you lazy. Gluttony will make a person lazy. Look, gluttony not is being tied to laziness or what the Bible would call slothfulness. Gluttony is tied to that. It literally is a, is a cause of it. You say, how? Because gluttony is a snowball effect. Because gluttony is a snowball effect. You basically, you eat too much, and then you gain some weight. And then what happens when you gain weight? You have less energy. You have less energy, so then you're just not as active anymore. You're, look, if you're a glutton and you eat too much, you will literally be tired more. What happens after a big Thanksgiving dinner? What's everyone do? Everyone wants to just go take a nap. Because they ate too much. It makes you tired. Then you gain more weight, and then you become less active, and this snowball just keeps going. Less active, less energy, you know, in this snowball effect, then you gain more weight because you're less active, and, less, and just one thing adds upon another, and pretty soon you just, you've put on so much weight where you just, you, you can't be active anymore. You literally get to a point where you can't do certain activities anymore, and you're tired more, that's one of the things people will always say, like when they lose weight, it's like, I've got so much more energy now. That's what people will say. It's not just they're lighter on their feet and, you know, there's so many other benefits to it. It's just like, I have more energy now. It's because of Proverbs 23, 21. Because being a glutton, eating too much will make you tired, all right? It'll make you less active. It'll turn to slothfulness, all right? So look, why, is, why are so many sins tied to gluttony? Why, why is it not just just this one thing. It's just this one problem that I have. And look, you will see this. You will see people that are just, that are gluttons, that have a problem with this. They always have other problems. They always have other issues, other sins that they are struggling with. Why? Because it's a lack of self-control. That's why. That's it. That's why. Turn to uh, Philippians chapter 3. Turn to Philippians chapter 3. I'll give you another one. I'll give you another one. Actually, you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. It's a self-control issue. And if you have, nobody just like, if they just have no self-control, nobody's like, well, that only affects them in one place in their life. If you have a problem with self-control, it's going to affect you in many different places in your life. In Philippians chapter 3, verse number 18, you're going to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. The Bible says, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. So here we have these people that are literally enemies of Christ in Philippians chapter 3. And look what it says. 
whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, and who do earthly things. It's, again, relating, you know, just feeding your belly and just doing whatever you want for yourself to people. Like, it's an aspect of evil people. This isn't to say gluttons are all evil people. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm just saying that if you have evil people that are against Christ, one of their issues is like they just feed their own belly. They just feed themselves. So we want to stay far away from attributes of evil people. But the point is, the reason that there's all these other sins attached to gluttony is because the core problem with gluttony is the, uh, the inability to control the urges of the flesh. That's what it is. It's like, I want that. It's, it's lust. Gluttony is a form of lust. It's a lack of self Control. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and look at verse number 27. Paul talked about self-control. And this is in a, a perfect application of verse number 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He says, but I keep under my body and I bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You know what he's saying? Now, you have to have a King James Bible for this one because the other Bibles are just like, I, I punch myself and I beat up myself like a boxer and all these different things that all the modern Bible versions saying. But he says, I keep under my body, Paul says. What he's saying is, I have control over my body. Paul is saying, I have control over my flesh. Why do people give up on their New Year's resolutions on January 31st? Because they have no control over their body. That's why. Because they're just like, you know what I want? I want to eat stuff. I want to, you know, go places that I shouldn't go, that I, I want to break these goals because they don't have control over themselves. They, Paul is talking about self-control. That's what he's talking about. That's what the Bible clearly teaches is having self-control. Look, the Bible doesn't say that we're never going to, you know, you're saved, so you're not going to have lust anymore. You're not going to have desire for sinful things anymore. No, the Bible says that all those things are going to remain with you. All those lusts and those sinful desires that everybody else engages in in this world, they're still going to be with you, but you're, you're going to have some differences. Number one, you're going to have the Holy Spirit inside you, helping you out, kind of pulling you, you know, along, that, say, saying like, come this way, don't go that way, come this way. But you still have the ability to override the Holy Spirit. Your flesh, you can still just give in to your flesh and go and just give in to every lust that you could have. You know, any, any covetousness that you have, anything. And right, the Bible just says that you have the Holy Spirit in you to help you, and we all know that. If you're saved, you know that. You can feel that. The Bible literally says you can grieve the Holy Spirit. You know how you grieve the Holy Spirit? You have lust, you have temptation, and you give into it. The Holy Spirit's like, ah! And you can feel that. You can feel that grieving of the Holy Spirit in you. Gluttony is just an example of this. Gluttony is just an example of, you know, giving into the flesh and having no self-control, which is why all these other sins many times are attached to people who have a problem with gluttony. Now, what does the world teach about this? So the Bible says, control your flesh. The Bible says, follow the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, you know, you're still going to have this flesh until we all die physically on this earth and, and go to heaven. But the Bible says, control it. Don't give into it. What does the world teach? Here's what the CDC says. Obesity is a complex disease that occurs when an individual's weight is higher than it was considered healthy for his or her height. Obesity affects children as well as adults. I'll get to that one in just a few minutes. But it basically, it, it's just like, this is so similar to alcoholism, it's ridiculous. People saying that like being a drunk is a disease. Being obese is a disease. And look, there's a conspiracy here, and I'm going to explain that to you, and it's true. It's true. There's a conspiracy here. But look, gluttony, obesity is the same type of disease as alcoholism in, in the fact that you give it to yourself. You literally give yourself this. The Bible says, no, it's about self-control of your body. That's all it is. But this is why people who are gluttons struggle with all kinds of other lusts. And look, you, you just think about people that you've known in your life that are gluttons, and they always have other problems as well. The Bible is true. All right. I mean, it would be extremely rare to find someone who is a glutton that just doesn't have any other issues. Like I've never, I can't even think of one. All right. It's just lust. 
and the inability to control a lust is all it is. You say, what, why, what are you talking about conspiracy? Here's the conspiracy. Here's a conspiracy. Why does se the secular world tell us that everything is just a disease? Alcoholism, disease. Um, obesity, disease. Basically, they're saying gluttony is a disease. Okay? Here's why they do it. This just came up for the, for the new year. I was looking at some news um, over the last couple weeks. There is a, there's supposedly a new miracle drug coming out. There's a new miracle drug that's supposed to be approved in 2023. It's called terzepatide. Terzepatide. And this is a new miracle drug that you get some injection and it just makes you not hungry. But the problem is, they're like, but who could afford it? Because like one shot or one treatment for a month is like $1,500. For, for like one, so look, if you're, and they're saying like healthcare is, you know, healthcare insurance companies aren't going to cover it. But guess what? The people that invent terzepicide, ter ter they, they want people to buy it. But nobody can afford $1,500 a month. So what do they want to do? They want insurance companies to have to be able to cover it. So what do we do? We get the CDC, the government, to declare it a disease. You see, it's not a conspiracy. It's just what's happening. All right, it's just what's happening. But the point is, these shots, these pills, these whatever, this is why people take these pills to make themselves not hungry or whatever, and then five years later, they find out they have some horrible side effect. Like, oh, that, by the way, that was, that was ruining your liver or whatever. All right, because the Bible just says, hey, just get self-control. This is the same thing with, like, depression drugs. People are like, oh, yeah, you know, just take this pill. And then they take the pill, and then they feel good. Um, for a while, I don't know, a, a month or two or whatever, and then like the side effect of the depression pill is that you become suicidal. It's like, what in the world? Stick to the solutions that the Bible says. Turn to Proverbs chapter 23 if you're not still there. I mean, because the Bible gives a solution here. So again, gluttony is just a lack of self-control. That's why you find people that are gluttons, they have problems with covetousness. They have problems with gambling. They have obsessions over things. It's not just a blanket statement, but look, walk through a casino and tell me if you see a bunch of people that are just in the best shape of their life and look like a bunch of like athletes. You're not going to see it. They're, 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 they're giving into that covetousness. They're giving into that greed, that lust, and they're probably gluttons too. What do casinos have? What do casinos have? You know why casinos have like unlimited free food? Because all the gamblers are also gluttons. <laughs> I mean, that's why. Because they all suffer from the same just lack of self-control. Hey, we'll just give them steaks and lobsters and all the food they want because that's what they want. And it's always what? It's always these big buffets, all you can eat at the casinos. Because look, it, it just... It's a lack of self-control in every area. Gluttony is just one of those things. All right, look at verse 2 of Proverbs chapter 23. Here's the Bible's solution. You're like, do I have to get a, a pill? Do I have to get a shot? What do I have to do? Do I have to call my insurance company? No, here's what you have to do. Put a knife to thy throat. That's what the Bible says. I mean, the Bible says, you know what the Bible is saying? If thou be a man given to appetite. What the Bible is saying here, the Bible always has solutions. It doesn't just come out and just give you all these problems. It says, hey, if you're having problems eating too much, just, it doesn't say like cut your throat. What it's saying is stop eating. It's saying do what it takes to stop eating so much. This is just like Matthew 5 where, where Jesus says, if your right hand offend thee, cut it off. He's saying, do what it takes to, to get your body under control. That's what the Bible is saying. So look, here's the solution. Eat less. Solved. Like, oh man, that's easier said than done. But look, here's the thing, folks. Your body, your body is an energy balance. And look, this is something, as I'm, you know, getting older, this is something you definitely notice as you get older. All right, look, I cannot eat the things that I used to eat or, you know, you'd be rolling me up here every Sunday. You have to roll the pastor up to the, the pulpit and stand me up like a, one of those weeble wobbles or whatever. Like, if I just ate what I ate when I was 18 years old, I would have a serious problem. I'd have a serious problem. Because your body, if you don't, let me give you an example. And here's the thing. Exercise is good, but it is not the answer. And I'm going to show you the numbers why. You say, I'm just going to exercise more. 
Here's why. I've been ex I regularly exercise. I've been regularly exercising for, I don't know, since I was 15, probably, since I was in second grade. I've been regularly exercising my whole life. But let me just give you some numbers and show you why this isn't the answer. First of all, when I exercise, I get more hungry. So typically, if I just don't control anything, when I exercise, I will eat more because you're burning all these calories. But look, here's the calories, here's the energy balance of your numbers and how you actually, here's the energy balance of your body and how you actually gain weight. Here's the math of it, okay? For someone that is my age and my size, okay, if you eat an extra 500 calories a day, now somebody my size will usually, you'll burn by not really doing anything, not really exercising, I'll burn about 2,200 calories a, uh, a day just by kind of just living my life breathing, all right? But if I exercise, do more things, it'll be more than that, of course. But here's the thing, an extra 500 calories a day that I would eat would cause me to, to gain one pound a week. One pound a week. You say, one pound a week? That's no big deal. Guess what? There's 52 weeks in a year. So if I live like this, just 500 calories a day, you're like, is that a lot? Is that a lot? If I gain one pound per week this year, I will, I will, you, will, you will need a forklift to get me up here by you know, New Year's Eve next, next year. That's, that's a lot of weight for somebody my size to put on, all right? But look, you say 500 calories, that doesn't seem so bad. A Big Mac is 563 calories, all right? A McDonald's strawberry shake is about 900 calories. I mean, you just think about how easy it is to eat one of these things. Uh, oh, you say, yeah, but I would never eat at McDonald's because that's disgusting. We eat it in and out here in California. And okay, well, a double-double with animal fries is 1,420 calories. I mean, that's a lot over that 500. I mean, that's almost my entire allotment of daily calories right there. Now, when I exercise, when I exercise, I'll typically lift weights for a little bit, and then I'll go on the elliptical machine for 20 minutes. And when I'm on the elliptical machine for 20 minutes, it's got a little calorie counter there, and I put in my weight, and it tells me how many calories. I'll burn 250 calories in 20 minutes on the elliptical machine. And then I go and have a strawberry shake at McDonald's. I just negated, like, by four times what I did. That's why, that's why the answer is not exercising. That's why in verse number two, the answer, look, exercising is good. Exercising will keep you healthy. Exercising will keep you able to move around. It'll keep your joints strong. It'll keep you able to keep going on those hikes and do all these things, give you stamina, all this. But your weight has to be controlled by putting a knife to your throat, by stopping eating so much. You must win the energy balance equation. In order to lose weight, in order to lose weight, it works the same way. You say, oh, 2,200 calories a day plus 500, I gain a pound. You're like, I want to lose weight. Well, now you got to eat 500 less. You got to burn 500 less or eat 500 less every week to, to lose a pound every week. It works the same way. But look, so it's a simple solution. It's a simple solution, but it's not easy. Because hunger, hunger and the eating habits that we get into are some of the strongest fleshly desires that human beings have. You say, Pastor, yeah, but by, by you know, 2 o'clock, I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. Look, you just have to, you have to find something that works for you. I don't know whether it be intermittent, intermittent fasting, which works really well. I started a, a diet at the beginning of December, and I committed, um, I committed, I was like, I'm going to keep this diet until January 1st, today. I started this diet at the beginning of December, and like the first week of that diet, it was a nightmare. It, it was terrible. It's terrible. I was complaining to my wife every night. I was like, I don't want to live like this. This is crazy. I had headaches. But I was breaking all those bad habits. Now, now, like, it just, it, what the beauty of it is, is like, I didn't lose like tons of weight in the diet. But the beauty of it is, is now it just gave me this complete control over my appetite. Like, I'm hardly ever hungry. Like, now I feel like I could lose weight because I have control over that desire. And look, that's what you have to get. You have to get control over that desire. Somehow, some way. There's all kinds of different healthy plans out there. I'm not saying you have to do everything, you know, what I say. But look, you just have to find a way to eat less is what you have to do if you want to lose weight. If you want to defeat gluttony in your life, do whatever it takes to get your body under control. And here's the thing. Time is not on your side. 
<laughs> that's, that's another thing. If you get one thing out of the Bible, we don't control time, and time is not on our side. And it's especially not on our side when it comes to gluttony, our physical health. Because look, do you see, let me ask you a question. Do you see more overweight people that are older or younger? Of course, it's a bigger problem the older you get. And it's because, and, and when I say younger, I mean less than 40. Right? Look, if you're, if you're an overweight, obese person that is less than 40, like, you're going to have problems in, in your life. Because as you get older, you, your metabolism slows down. You literally have to be more disciplined as you get older, or this will become more and more of a problem in your life. Look, if you are overweight by, you know, under 40, under 35, you're going to, I mean, you're probably, I mean, if you're like an obese person when you're younger, you're going to die young. I mean, that, I mean, it, like, the wages of that sin will be in early physical death, basically. Because obesity just destroys everything in your body. I was shocked. Like, my wife turned me on to this Dr. Bird guy. Like, I, I can't stop listening to the guy. And I'm just like, he'll scare you into losing weight. Because it's just like what extra calories will do to your body. Now, think about this. Overweight kids. I see a lot of overweight kids today. Overweight kids. Turn to Proverbs chapter 13. Overweight children are heading for disaster in their lives. You say, why? Because they're going to be obese? No. Look at all these sins that I talked to you about. Look at all these sins. The gluttonous child, was he was stubborn. He was rebellious. Who thinks that raising a child with no self-control or self-control problems is going to go well, according to what the Bible tells you? Turn to Proverbs chapter 13. Now, this is the worst thing. I've seen this several times in my life, and this is borderline child abuse, in, in my opinion, all right, is, is parents that use food in place of actual discipline, as the Bible says, in their lives. Instead of, look at Proverbs 13, 24. You know, you know this verse well. It says, he that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him, be times. In Proverbs chapter 23, verse number 13 and verse number 14, withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and thou shalt deliver his soul from hell. This is talking about spanking your children. This isn't talking about child abuse here. This is talking about spanking your children. This is talking about, you know, giving your children physical correction to deliver their soul. And it, the Bible says if you don't do that, you hate them. Well, glutton is an example of this. People that don't want to spank their kids, but they're like, hey, just do what I say and you can have these potato chips. Just do what I say. Just do what I say. Just be good for, for this activity, this wedding, this church service, whatever, and you can have these Oreo cookies. Look, those, that, that, is, that is borderline child abuse in my opinion because what you're going to do is not only are you going to destroy their health, not only are you going to destroy their health, you are going to, you're going to raise children that have zero self-control. And they will have all kinds of other problems. You know what? They're probably going to rebel against you too. If that is how you do things. You're, I mean, you're teaching them to have no discipline. You're teaching them bad habits. And look, you're literally teaching them habits that will shorten their life. I don't understand how you see that so much with parents. I don't understand it at all. Like, they must not care about their children is the only thing I can think of. You know, look, as homeschool parents, we need to, we need to teach our kids uh, against gluttony. We need to teach our kids how to take care of themselves. We need to teach our kids how to, look, they're not in Phi Ed in some school. My kids aren't in Phi Ed in some school. I have a little uh, gym at home, and I teach them. Um, Jacob just started lifting weights about five months ago, and, you know, Ashley has been exercising um, um, her certain way that we've, we've taught her and all these things, and we have facilities where they can do that. But look, these things need to be taught, and these habits need to be formed because these are things that will literally prolong their life on this earth. It, and it, you know what it does? It teaches them discipline. It teaches them self-control. Dad, are we working out tonight? Uh, yeah, we better do that. You know, four times a week. We're going to do that this week. We're going to do that tonight. It teaches them that discipline again and again and again. That Monday night, Tuesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, this is what we do. You know what? That'll carry them once they're out of the house. That'll carry them through their life. These habits, these things. Look, that's what you do. I mean, to use 
garbage and unhealthy things to, to replace biblical, I mean, not doing biblical discipline is one thing, but to replace it with sin is, is like, you're just like, do people believe the Bible? You know, what is happening here? So look, folks, it is all about self-control. And gluttony is a very serious thing. Because, like I said, time is not on our side. The older we get, the less we can eat. So we need to get better at controlling our desires as we get older. All right? Otherwise, that cycle begins. We'll start to slow down. Look, I don't want to slow down. You know, I want to be doing activities with my kids. I want to be doing activities with my grandkids. I don't want to slow down. I don't want to, you know, gain weight every year. Okay? It's not about vanity or anything like this. It's just about what the Bible says. All right? Now, look, I was going to actually stop this, this diet because I thought it was pretty extreme. I was going to stop this diet on the first, but actually what I'm going to do is I like it so much, I'm just going to keep going with it, and I'm going to give myself a couple days where I can have, you know, we'll go out to ice cream, you know, on a couple days. So I'm just I'm modifying it just a little bit, but I really enjoy, you know, what we're doing. My wife's doing the same diet. So, you know, she's been doing this diet for like two years. So finally, I was just like, you can't beat them, join them, you know. But now, you know, we can, you know, I can kind of I, identify with her. We can go to a restaurant, kind of eat the same things. And I'm not all irritated because she's making me eat dessert by myself, you know, and all this. But the point is, is that I'm going to make a couple modifications and I can have ice cream a couple times a month. And you can still, I mean, say I get older, I have an ice cream cone. Like, what kind of life is that? But no, that's not what it's about. Because having an ice cream cone once or twice a month is not gluttony. It's a treat. It's a treat. See, this is life in general. This is life in general. People don't understand this. A vacation is no fun. A vacation is miserable unless there's the hard work that you, you took a break from to go on vacation. If I just ate ice cream all day, every day, and Oreo cookies, and, and whatever I thought was a treat in my life, look, I would, I would feel horrible. If I was, you know, if I just, you know, somebody that just, well, you see this, people are just like super wealthy and they're just like, I'm just going to have a vacation my whole life. Look, they're miserable. And the reason that they're miserable is because that vacation is only good if the hard work is there on the other side of it. That, that's just what the Bible teaches. I mean, people but nothing, with nothing but leisure time are miserable human beings. The same way that people that would just do nothing but eat garbage and eat the things that people think are a treat, they'll, they'll just feel horrible. Because when you have extra pounds on, you're tired, you don't want to do anything, you'll be miserable. But you know what? Having an ice cream cone twice a month, that's a real treat. And I've found that I enjoy it a lot more than, than I ever did, you know, having it less. You know, same thing, pie, donuts, ice cream, you know, whatever. These are treats, not regular things that we should be eating. And if we don't have the healthy eating the 99% of the time, you know, it's, you'll be miserable. And it'll destroy your health. And there'll be immediate effects, like, you, you know, you don't want to, you get tired, as the Bible said, you can't do things. But there'll be long-term effects as well. I mean, literally organs, kidneys, liver, heart, all joints, all made worse because of gluttony. Your whole body over time. So look, be healthy, eat healthy things, eat less is really what the Bible says. So look, it's just it's a it's a message of self-control this morning. It's a message of self-control in 2023. And it if you can get self-control in 2023, everything, if you're able to tell your body what to do, guess what? You'll read the Bible in January. If you're able to tell your body, what to do, you know, you'll end up reading the Bible in January, you'll, you'll sit down, and hopefully, you know, you set some goals for the new year. I mean, I sat down, I got a whole Word document, I got goals for, you know, the church, I got goals for my family, I got, goal, I got goals for my house, I got goals for my yard, I got goals for my finances this year, I got goals for all these things, and guess what? I, I hit my goals. Why? Because, like, when I tell my body to do something, it, it does it. Like, when you tell your body to... If you can't tell your body to do something and have your body follow you, keep your body, keep under your body, keep your body under control, goals are pointless. Any New Year's resolution is pointless. That's why gluttony is tied to so many other things. There would just be no point to having any kind of goal 
if your body just doesn't listen to you. <laughs> so look, tell your body what to do, and it will listen. You know, that's what the Bible is saying, and it will pay off everywhere in your life, not just with this sin of gluttony, which is why you see it just attached to so many wicked things in the Bible. Let's bow our heads and have a word of prayer.